Hey, hello folks. Welcome to another episode of Carmine Sings. Uh, I'm going to do my usual quick disclaimers at the beginning of the program. Uh, tonight's episode is uh, dedicated to uh, Jim Croce, one of my favorite artists from my uh, junior high days, actually. And uh, he died way too young at the age of 30. <clears throat> as, I, as always, uh, the bio, biographical information was compiled from uh, Wikipedia. So there may be some errors, some inconsistencies that you might notice. If you are absolutely sure that you know something is incorrect, you can't change it on Wikipedia because it can be edited. But I always say, please use discretion. Don't just automatically change something. If you think it's right, make sure. Uh, again, I'm going to be doing uh, some of uh, Jim Croce's biggest hits. These are not imitations. I, I don't claim to be a Jim Croce impersonator, mustache aside. Um, these are basically just my interpretations of these wonderful songs. And uh, as I said, it, it may be a little bit of an imitation because I did grow up listening to Jim Croce. So we're going to jump in on the uh, biographical material. And uh, excuse me if I've mispronounced some of these names because some of these names are tough. All right. Uh, Croce was born James Joseph Croce on uh, January 10th, 1943 in South Philadelphia to James Albert Croce and his wife, Flora Mary Babucci. <laughs> That's how you pronounce it, Babucci. They were both Italian Americans. Uh, Croce took a strong interest in music at a young age. At five, he learned to play his first song on the accordion, Lady of Spain. I'm laughing because my cousin played the accordion and that seems like that's the first song for everybody. Uh, in 1960, he studied at the Malvern Preparatory School for a year before enrolling at Villanova University where he majored in psychology and minored in German. Interesting. Uh, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1965. Croce was a member of the Villanova Singers, uh, which were also called the Villanova Spires. Uh, when the Spires performed off campus or made recordings, they were known as the Coventry Lads. Croce was also a, a student disc jockey at WKVU, which has since uh, changed their name to WXVU. So at that point, we're going to start, and I'm doing these in chronological order. It's not something I normally do, but uh, for this, because his career was so short, I am going to do them in chronological order tonight. And uh, the first one will be, uh, was the first single ever released by Jim Croce, You Don't Mess Around With Jim. Well, uptown got its hustlers. Bowery got it bumped. 42nd Street got Big Jim, a walker, he the pool shooting son of a gun. They big and dumb as a man can't come, but he's stronger than a country horse. And when the bad folks all get together at night, you know they all call Big Jim Boss just because. And they say you don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't spit into the wind, you don't pull. The mask of an old Lone Ranger, and you don't mess around with Jim. I do, do, da, da, dee, 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 dee. While out of South Alabama came a country boy, he say I'm looking for a man named Jim. I am a fool, shooting boy, my name is Willie McCoy, but down at home they call me Slim. Well, I'm looking for the king of 42nd Street, he's driving that drop top Cadillac. Last week he took all my money and it may sound funny But I come to get my money back And everybody say, hey Jack, don't you know that you don't Tug on Superman's cape You don't spit into the wind You don't pull the mask of an old one ranger And you don't mess around with you But do do da da dee 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 Well a hush fell over the pool room The Jimmy come popping in off the street when the cutting was done, the only part that wasn't bloody were the soles of the big man's feet. Yeah, he was cutting about a hundred places, and he was shot in a couple more. And you better believe he sang a different kind of story. Now, Big Jim hit the floor. Oh, oh, oh. Now they say you don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't spit in the wind. You don't pull. Yeah, Big Jim got his hat, found out where it's at. It's not hustling people strange to you, even if you do got a two-piece custom-made pool cue. <laughs> now you don't have on Superman's cape, you don't spin in the wind, you don't pull the mask off an old ranger, and you don't mess around with Slim. was released 
released in 1972 on uh, Jim Croce's first album for ABC Records called You Don't Mess Around With Jim. Okay, we're going to pick up his career. He was, as you remember, he was in Villanova College. At Villanova, he formed bands and performed at fraternity parties, coffee houses, and universities around Philadelphia playing anything that the people wanted to hear. It included blues, rock, acapella, railroad music, anything. On uh, November 29, 1963, Croce met his future wife, Ingrid Jacobson, at a hootenanny at the Philadelphia Convention Hall. Croce released his first album called Facets in 1966, and only 500 copies were pressed. I'm actually trying to find that on Amazon. Uh, the album has been uh, had been financed by his parents with a $500 wedding gift with the condition that he used the money to record the album. So his parents were in full support of his career, which is, uh, <laughs> which is rare. I wish, I wish I had my dad's support when I was a kid. It would have helped, <laughs> I think. Uh, the next song, uh, this is the second song that charted for Jim Croce, also in 1972, and I love this song. Uh, the name of the song is called Operator. Well, could you help me place this call? You see the number on the matchbook is old and faded She's living in L.A. With my best old ex-friend Ray Guy, she said she knew well and sometimes hated Isn't that the way they say it goes Let's forget all that Give me the number If you can't find it So I can call it To tell them I'm fine At the show I've overcome the flow Learn to take it well Only wish my words Would just convince myself That it just wasn't real But that's not the way It feels Operator, well, can you help me place this call? Well, I can't read the number that you just gave me. There's something in my eyes. You know it happens every time. I think about the love that I thought would save me. Isn't that the way they say it goes? Well, let's forget all that and give me the number if you can't find it So I can call just to tell them I'm fine at the show I've overcome the flow, I've learned to take it well I only wish my words could just convince myself That it just wasn't real But that's not the way it feels no, 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 no That's not the way it feels Operator Well, let's forget about this call No one there I really wanted to talk to Thank you for your time Now you've been so much more than kind You can keep the dime Isn't that the way they say it goes? Well, let's forget all that and Give me the number if you can find it So I can call just to tell them I'm fine at the show I've overcome the flow, I've learned to take it well Only wish my words could just convince myself That it just wasn't real But that's not the way it feels
mention also too that all these uh, backing versions come from karaokeversion.com and they do a pretty good job of uh, recreating the original arrangements. So I gotta give them some props for that. Uh, from the mid 1960s to early 1970s, Croce performed with his wife as a duo. At first, their performances included songs by artists like Ian and Sylvia, Gordon Lightfoot, Joan Baez, and Woody Guthrie, but in time they began writing their own music. Croce married his wife Ingrid in 1966 and converted to Judaism because his wife was Jewish. He enlisted in the Army National Guard that same year and served on active duty for four months, leaving for duty a week after his honeymoon. Wow, that was kind of close. Uh, Croce was not good with authority, and he had to go through basic training twice, and uh, he later stated that uh, if there's ever a war where we fight with mops, uh, I'll be ready. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> he had a great sense of humor, if you didn't know that. If you ever saw any uh, live, uh, live performances by Croce, he was almost a stand-up comic, actually. This next song I want to send out to my good friend, Mr. Phil, who uh, told me that this is just about his all-time favorite song. And it was used in a movie with Desi Arnaz Jr. I can't recall the name of the movie. It was a TV movie, but it uh, was used in the opening and the closing credits and also during the picture itself. It's called Time in a Bottle. If I could save time in a bottle The first thing that I'd like to do Is to save every day Till eternity passes away Just to spend them with you If I could make days lapse forever If words could make wishes come true I'd save every day like a treasure again I would spend them with you but there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you find them looked around love to know you're the one that I want to go through time with. If I had a box just for wishes and dreams that had never come true, the box would be empty except for the memory of how they were answered by you but there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you find them looked around enough to know you're the one that i want to go I really think, uh, and I probably maybe people might think I'm overstating it, but I really think that he was, he was very poetic in his lyrics and uh, some of his songs, which I couldn't find the backing tracks to, I would have ra rather have done rather than just the big hits. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I was unable to find those tracks. I did find one, which I'll talk a little bit of, about later. In 1968, the Croches were encouraged by record producer Tommy West to move to New York City. And they recorded their first album with Capitol Records. Uh, it was called Jim and Ingrid Croce. Uh, during the next two years, they drove 300,000 miles promoting that album. Now, that's, uh, that's a lot of driving, <laughs> if you don't think so. Um, becoming disillusioned by the music business in New York City, they sold all but one guitar to pay the rent, and then they returned to Pennsylvania countryside, settling in an old farm in Lindell, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania, sorry, I just said Pennsylvania, didn't I? Uh, where Croce got a job driving trucks and doing construction work to pay the bills while continuing to write songs. Uh, Croce stated, 
I'd work construction crews and I'd been a welder while I was in college, but I'd rather do other things than get burned. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, he later said he got a job at a Philadelphia R&B AM radio station, WHAT, what? <laughs> WHAT, where he translated commercials into soul. He said, I'd sell airtime to a place like Bronco's Pool Room and then write the spot like, you want to be cool? You want to shoot pool? Dig it. <laughs> and on that cool note, we're going to go to the next song. Now, this was, uh, the, this was when finally uh, this song charted, and it went to number one, and this was a, the, really the big breakthrough hit, although the other songs did chart. This one went all the way up to number one, and I'm sure you guys at home know it, so sing along. It's Bad, Bad Leroy Brown. And that's it for Cole. Well, the south side of Chicago is the baddest part of town. And if you go down there, you better just beware of a man named Leroy Brown. Now, Leroy, more than trouble. You see, he stand about six foot four. All the downtown ladies call him treetop lover. All the men just call him sir. And he's bad, bad, Leroy Brown. Baddest man in the whole damn town. Badder than old King Kong. Meaner than a junkyard dog. Now Leroy, he's a gambler. And he likes his fancy clothes. And he liked to wave his diamond ring in front of everybody's nose. He got a custom continental. He got an Eldorado too. He got a 32 gun in his pocket for fun. He got a razor in his shoe. Well, he's bad, bad, Leroy Brown. The baddest man in the whole damn town. Badder than old King Kong. Junkyard well, Friday, about a week ago, Leroy shooting dice. And at the edge of the bar sat a girl named Adora said, Oh, that girl looks nice. Well, he cast his eyes upon her, and the trouble soon began. Leroy Brown, he learned a lesson about a messing with the wife of a jealous man. Well, he back. Leroy Brown, baddest man in the whole damn town. Badder than old King Kong, meaner than the junkyard dog. Now the two men took to fighting, and when they pulled them from the floor, well, Leroy looked like a jigsaw puzzle with a couple of pieces gone. Everybody, well, he's bad, bad. Leroy Brown, baddest man. Oh, damn town, badder than old King Kong, meaner than a junkyard dog. One more time, well, he's bad, bad, Leroy Brown, baddest man in the whole damn town, badder than old King Kong, meaner than a junkyard dog. Now he was badder than old King Kong, meaner than a junkyard dog. That is so much fun. They say a lot of uh, the songs that Jim Croce wrote were based on characters that he met throughout his life in the Army and uh, various jobs he worked, as I had just mentioned. In 1970, now, I'm going to have to preface this by saying I had to look this gentleman's name up on the Internet to learn the proper pronunciation, and I'm sure you're still going to say I'm destroying it. But in any way, <laughs> in 1970, Croce met the classically trained pianist, guitarist, and singer-songwriter Murray Muleisen, and um, Murray was from Fr Trenton, New Jersey, and he met him through a producer, oh my God, these names, he met him through a producer named Joel Salviolo. Now, Salviolo brought the Croce and Muleisen duo together at the production office of Tommy West and Terry Cashman in New York City. Initially, Croce was backing uh, Muleisen on guitar at his gigs, but in time, their roles reversed with Muleisen adding lead guitar to Croce's music. Here's where things really started picking up for Jim. In 1972, Croce signed a three-year record deal, or three-record deal, not year, <laughs> a three-record deal 
with a heavy, heavy, with ABC Records and released two albums. You don't mess around with Jim and Life and Times. I have both those albums on vinyl. They're fantastic. The singles, You Don't Mess Around with Jim, Operator, and Time in a Bottle, uh, which actually Jim had written for his unborn, uh, at the time, unborn son, AJ, uh, all received airplay. Croce's biggest signal, Bad Bad Leroy Brown, hit number one on the American charts in, 19, in July of 1973. That year, the Croce's relocated to San Diego, California. Who baby, moving out south. North, west, east, I don't know. Yeah, California's out there somewhere. All right, we're gonna, now this one, um, Unfortunately, uh, these next few songs were uh, what they call posthumously released, unfortunately, which means after he had passed away, but we'll get to that later. But this next song is, was a huge hit also. Title track of the album called I Got a Name. Like the pine trees lining a winding road I got a name, I got a name Like a singing bird and a croaking toad I got a name, I got a name And I carry it with me like my daddy did But I'm living the dream that he kept here Moving me down the highway, rolling me down the highway, moving ahead so life won't pass me by. Like the north wind whistling down the sky, I've got a song, I've got a song. Like a whippoorwill and a baby's cry. I've got a song, I've got a song And I carry it with me and I sing it loud If it gets me nowhere, but well, I'll go there proud Moving me down the highway, rolling me down the highway Moving ahead so life won't pass me by Take it boys And I'm gonna go there free Like a fool I am and I'll always be I've got a dream I've got a dream They can change their minds but they can't change me I've got a dream I've got a dream Oh, I know I could share it if you want me to If you're going my way, I'll go with you Moving me down the highway Rolling me down the highway Moving ahead till life won't pass me by Moving me down the highway Rolling me down the highway Moving ahead till life won't what a great, great song. Just a beautiful, beautiful tune. We're going to continue now with our story. Uh, as his career picked up, Croce began touring the United States with Mulizen, um, you know, performing live and including large coffee houses and college campuses, folk festivals, that sort of thing. However, Croce's financial situation was still dire. The record company had fronted him the money to record the album, and much of the money the album earned went to pay back the advance. Nice record companies, gotta love them. Uh, Croce also began appearing on television, including shows like American Bandstand, The Dick Cavett Show, The Helen Reddy Show, The Midnight Special, which he co-hosted, um, and um, things like that. <laughs> Croce finished recording the album I Got a Name one week before his death. During his tours, Croce grew increasingly homesick. 
And in a letter to his wife, which arrived shortly after his death, oh God, so sorry about this, this is a sad story. In a letter uh, that arrived shortly after his death, Croce stated his intention to quit music and stick to writing short stories and movie scripts as a career and withdraw from public life. Interesting. Unfortunately, he made that decision a little too late. We'll get into more of that after this, uh, this next song. This was also a big hit released posthumously, um, and um, it's a romantic uh, song called I'll Have to Say I Love You in a Song. Very pretty. I'll do my best, Jim. Every time I try to tell you, the words just came out wrong. So I have to say I love you in a song. Yeah, I know it's kind of strange. But every time I'm near you, I just run out of things to say. I know you don't understand. Every time I try to tell you, the words just came out wrong. So I have to say I love you in a song. Every time the time was right, all the words just came out. So I have to say I love you in a song. Yeah, I know it's kind of late. It's kind of late. Hope I didn't wake you. But there's something that I just gotta say. I gotta say. I know you do Every time I try to tell you the word just came out loud. So I have to say I love you in a song. As you've been hearing, these songs were all produced by Cashman and West, and who also played on the uh, played instruments and background vocals on the albums. And uh, they were well-produced songs. But a lot of what Jim Croce did and what he's remembered for now is the smaller venues and uh, the college campuses and so forth that he played with uh, with his guitar player Maury uh, Mulizen. And um, I'm going to get get into that a little more, but I am going to finish the story now. I apologize always at this point in the show because now it gets a little sad. <clears throat> on Thursday, September 20th, 1973, during Croce's Life and Times tour, and the day before his ABC single, I Got a Name, was set to be released, Croce, Mulizen, and five others were killed when their chartered uh, Beechcraft E-18S crashed into a tree while taking off from, uh, let's, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this correct, Natchitoches, <laughs> Ron will fix it later, Natchitoches, a regional airport in Natchitoches, Louisiana, very sad. Um, Croce had just completed a concert at Northwestern State University's Prather Coliseum in Nassatoshitz and uh, was flying to Sherman, Texas for a concert at Austin College. The plane crashed an hour after the end of the concert. Croce was only 30 years old. An investigation uh, did show that the plane crashed on takeoff after clipping a pecan tree uh, at the end of the runway and a later investigation uh, placed the sole blame uh, for the accident on pilot error due to his downwind takeoff into what they call a black hole, which is a severe darkness limiting the uh, use of visual references. Uh, if you want to uh, visit the gravesite, uh, Jim Croce was buried at Heim Solomon Memorial Park in Fraser, uh, Pennsylvania. As I said, uh, that's the sad part of the story. <clears throat> this last song I want to do, and I really am not that familiar with it, so uh, Jim, I'm going to do my best. 
I wanted to do this song, even though it never charted, because this gives you more of a feel of what Jim and uh, Maury did when they were out performing. It was a, this is a stripped down version of just, just guitars, I believe. I don't believe there's any percussion or anything like that. And uh, so I wanted to end the show with this song. And uh, one of my favorite songs, even though I'm not that familiar with it and the timing is a little challenging, but I like to challenge myself, keep you guys on your toes too. The name of the song is Lover's Cross. Beautiful, beautiful, poetic song. I guess that it was bound to happen Just a matter of time Now I've come to my decision and it's a one of the painful kind Cause it seems that you wanted a martyr Just a regular guy wouldn't do Baby, I can't hang upon no lover's cross for you Well, I really gotta hand it to you Cause girl, you really tried but for every time that we spent laughing, there were two times that I cried. You were trying to make me your martyr. That's the one thing I just couldn't do. Baby, I can't hang upon no lover's cross for you. These tables are meant for turning. People are bound to change and Bridges are meant for burning When the people and memories They join all the same Now I hope that you can find Another who can take What I could not He'd have to be a super guy Or maybe a super god Cause I never was much of a martyr before And I ain't about to start nothing new And baby, I can't hang upon no lover's cross for you These tables are meant for turning People are bound to change And bridges are meant for burning People and memories, they join all the same Still I hope that you can find another Who can take what I could not You'd have to be a super guy Or maybe a super god Cause I never was much of a martyr before And I ain't about to start nothing new no, oh, baby, I can't hang upon no lover's cross for you. <clears throat> Sorry, I get a little emotional with that song. That is a beautiful, beautiful, sad, sad song. Anybody that's known heartbreak in their life can feel every, uh, every bit of it in the lyrics of that song. Well, thanks for tuning in, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Carmine Sings. We'll be back again next week with a tribute to a different artist. And until then, uh, just keep smiling out there. It's not as bad as it all seems. Love you all. See you next week.